Hey everyone, welcome back to part two of my top three pressure washers for home detailing. Uh, my second choice is the Karcher K1700 Cube. It has 1700 PSI, or it's rated for 1700 PSI and 1.2 GPM. Very similar to the part one uh, Ryobi 1600. Uh, very similar specs, similar style of pressure washer. It's also a little cube. This one is not on wheels. The reason why this made it on the top three is because Karcher is an amazing brand. They're a German company. I'm not knocking Ryobi or anything like that because they're an amazing Japanese company. That's also why they made it on this list. I think this one is more stout than the Ryobi 1600. It has some features that I like more than the Ryobi. The Ryobi has some features that I like more than the Karcher. But regardless, they are both really good pressure washers. I just think this one is a hair better. The motor feels more stout. We'll probably get the same GPM out of it, um, even though this is rated, rated for 1700. We're still probably going to put a 3.0 orifice on there, get the PSI down to around 1000, which is perfect for detailing, and hopefully get 1.4, 1.5 GPM. We'll be testing that in the test, but very similar to the Ryobi. The Ryobi, uh, the new Ryobi, not the remanufactured or the factory reconditioned that I did my video on. Uh, just like the new Ryobi, it has a three year warranty. Uh, this one has a 25 foot hose. I believe the Ryobi comes with a 20 foot hose. Either way, you're probably not going to use it. Five feet doesn't make the difference, uh, especially if you're washing a pickup truck, you're probably going to get halfway around the truck and then you're going to have to make loops around it. Uh, it's easier just to buy a 50 foot hose. So just like the Ryobi, this comes with a 15 degree nozzle, a soap nozzle, and a turbo nozzle. The only difference is the Ryobi has a soap inlet, so you put a, a a tube inside of a, a certain type of detergent and it draws it in. This one has an onboard soap tank. But anyway, let's get this thing unboxed. Alright, now that we have all this unboxed, uh, very similar to the Ryobi. Same, uh, the Ryobi had a 20 foot hose, this one has a 25 foot hose. Same difference though, I mean you, you barely take this thing over and it kinks right away and the kink kind of stays. Just replace the hose, get an Uber Flex like I'm going to use on this thing. Uh, same difference, the only thing is the Ryobi for the garden hose outlet, it is built in to the machine. So guys if there's ever an O-ring in here, hand tight, don't put a wrench on it especially on this plastic piece right here. The metal will always win when you're tightening plastic on metal. Now this one is a little bit better designed because there is metal threads in here. So the chance of breaking is a lot less. But still, hand tight everything. Now, same thing, like I said, as the Ryobi. The Karcher comes with a soap dispenser nozzle, a turbo, and a 15 degree. Now I don't know what size this 15 degree is because it says 15080 and then a dash mark. So they don't want to tell you what orifice size this is. Because uh, it's definitely not an 8.0 orifice. And the, the gun is identical to the Ryobi's. Um, I'll actually grab the Ryobi's for you. Ryobi, Karcher, same trigger. Um, it has the same, pretty much the same max PSI or bar rating, um, max temperature, it even has the same warnings on the inside of the trigger. 
So I'm pretty sure they're getting these from the same place, and Kartra has the nameplate on one side, and Ryobi has the nameplate on the other. Like I said, this one does have a detergent tank, and there is also a storage area back here. So here's your cord. You know, you can probably, you know, stuff a shorty gun in here. I believe this is made for the cord and possibly the hose to keep it all in one area. Uh, same 35 foot cable as the Ryobi and as always when you're setting these up hit the test but or the reset button a few times when you're plugging them in all right let's get this thing set up I am going to use my quick disconnects on here a quick disconnect is just the way to go I mean it doesn't add any performance but it makes the user experience 10 times better to not have to thread these things on every single time. And every single time you thread it on, you're going to wonder if it's going to leak. So just save yourself the hassle, put the quick disconnects on. Uh, the outlet of this is the same as the Ryobi. It is going to be a M22 by 14, so it's a standard size. If for some reason you didn't want to quick, quick disconnect it, your Uber Flex hose uh, will spin right onto this and the quick disconnects that I'm going to link below and the ones that I'm going to use are M22 by 14 so you're not going to have any issues um, with that. This is standard size. And the nice thing about this over the Ryobi is is if you break this for some reason if you put a wrench on it you can buy a new one. If you break the one on the Ryobi you have to get a new unit. Like I said in my previous video, I do this for all my pressure washers. Manufacturers have said that half of their returns come from people plugging this in. The test was hit, so it's not active. They go to click their machine on. What the heck's going on? And some of these will stay off and they make you hit the reset button to test that the GFCI works. But obviously this one's working. When you hit reset, or test and reset, the green light comes back on so you know it's good. Alright, now that we have all this hooked up, uh, I do have a shutoff valve on the end of this uh, hose, just so I don't have to go out to my hose bib every time. I'm not going to use the stock gun or the stock hose for any of my testing, uh, because I'm going to use my Uberflex. That really doesn't kink. Even if you crank it over, it doesn't kink. Um, and I'm using my SPS shorty gun. The water is on. The machine is not on, but it's plugged in. So always, before you run your machine, you want to bleed it out or bleed all the air out. But let's see. Alright, now that it's all bled, we're going to fire it up, and I'm actually going to hook up my pressure washer gauge to this. Uh, I dropped this the other day, and it is really inaccurate, but I'm not um, putting it on here to show you any exact pressure, but I'm showing you a feature that this pressure washer has that a lot of other electric pressure washers don't have. Alright, so now that the system is all bled out, I have my pressure gauge on here. Now let's fire it up. As you can see, Karcher's will hold a high pressure. So the nice thing is now that when it's holding a high pressure, the second you hit that trigger, you instantly have pressure and you don't have to wait as long for it to build up pressure. All right, let's run this machine a little bit. Hey guys, this is a close-up of the pressure gauge so you can see um, how it drops pressure and then when I let off the trigger after running it for a couple seconds, how it goes back up and it holds pressure. So it's going to level out. 
and it'll usually end up after a couple seconds sitting at about 2000 PSI. But this has actually been sitting for a few minutes now while I've set all this up and it's still sitting at 2000 PSI. But the bucket's empty. Got this all set up. We're going to run the first test on the stock nozzle. And I'm guessing with this machine, we're going to be very close to 1.2 GPM, just like the Ryobi. And three, two, one. Alright, now we're going to run the same exact test, but instead of the stock 15 degree nozzle, we're going to use my 3.0 orifice size nozzle. Three, two, one. With the 3.0 orifice nozzle on there, we got 1.48 GPM or 1.5 GPM. So we just edged out the performance of the Ryobi 1600. This little machine is really impressive. Pumping out 1.48, 1.5 GPM, it edges out the Ryobi. Well, let's get outside and test these with all four of the foam cannons and we're going to be using the same exact uh, dilution in all the foam cannons. We're going to be using the Snow Foam Australia Berry Thick Snow Foam, 50 milliliters of soap, and 450 milliliters of water.
As you can tell, the performance of this just outshine the 1600, or the Ryobi 1600. Um, I noticed that with the 1600, the MATCC foam cannon actually foamed better than the Trinova, but with the Karcher, the Trinova foamed better than the MATCC. I do believe this is a better unit than the Ryobi, but they both serve their own purpose. If I was a mobile detailer and I was just starting out and I wanted, you know, to do this on a budget, I wouldn't use this machine. I would go with the Ryobi 1600, because if it fails, Home Depot. They both have a three year warranty. They both use the same quick disconnects, M22 by 14, and this whole kit that you saw me use today, minus the foam cannons, is $229.75. This Karcher Cube, the best price I could find was actually not Amazon. It was Bed Bath & Beyond. So go shake your significant other down for her 20% off one item coupon or go on their website. I think if you put your email in, they email you a coupon for an online and in-store coupon. The unit itself on their site, once you get the coupon, is $120.79 and shipped to my door was $130 and I believe on Amazon they're $129.99 so plus tax it's probably going to be about $140. So through Bed Bath & Beyond is your best price or at least that's the price I got it for. Obviously everything right now is going up in prices. But that's the price I got it for Bed Bath & Beyond, and obviously this is all the same as the, as the uh, Ryobi 1600. So the Quick Disconnect Kit, 20, $21.99, Uber Flex Hose, $48.99, the 3.0 Nozzle Set. I just use the 40 for auto detailing, but it comes with the whole set, uh, 15 degree, 25 degree, 40 degree, and 0 degree. And then the Short Gun is $29.99. And the totals for all of this is $229.75. And one thing I wanted to let all you guys know is these videos of my top three pressure washers, they're not in order. I wouldn't say the Ryobi is my third pick. I wouldn't consider this my second pick. And my next pressure washer, I wouldn't consider that my number one. These are just my picks. And you guys can figure out what works for you. You know, if you think you're going to plop one of these in the trunk and go mobile detail a little bit, it's going to be Ryobi all day long. But for a home user, you want to create a cool little shelf with the reel, I would use this. This is a better unit for the at home use, I believe. But with that being said, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Like, share, subscribe. I'm going to put links to everything in the description below. Uh, follow me on Instagram because I think I have four or five pressure washers and 60 different snow foams so we're gonna start doing giveaways. Well, that's it. My name is Peter. This is Garage Detail and keep it clean.